Hey, this is Darren from Property Prosperity. Today I thought I'd have a bit of a chat about investing for the future. I uh, just had an interview today for my latest podcast. Um, if you haven't checked it out, it's called Property Secrets. So you'll be able to, I'll put the, I'll put it in the comments box so you can click on the link if you want to check out some of the past episodes. Um, yeah, I was actually chatting to an investor from Melbourne and he was just talking about how his strategy of investing in property is just to buy properties that he can create some value for the future. But he doesn't necessarily realize that value straight away. He will hang on to the property and then down the track, you, know, you want to do, you collect one property and another property and you know, his aim is to collect lots and lots and lots and lots of properties until at some point in time when he's realized, ready to to you know realize those gains, then you'll go and either develop them or re, um, re renovate them or do something to the property to to create that to to extract that extra value, I suppose. So then he can then use that for his retirement or to set himself up for whatever he needs to do. So I thought I'd have a bit of a chat about that because that's not a lot of a lot of people are very focused on the short term or they're focused on the long term. Whereas this investor, he's actually looking at both. So he's what he's trying to do when he's investing, he's He's buying a property that he's trying to get it to cover its costs because he's thinking long term, but also long term with development potential. So he wants to a sort of a, a property that's going to have potential capital gains, but also he wants to be able to create capital gains as well. So he wants there to be some sort of hidden value inside the property. So that might be yeah, a potential renovation, but the length he's actually looking at hanging on to the properties for is he's really assuming the property is going to wear out over time. So what he's looking at then is, is after that property wears out, so it's not worth developing the property right now because the you know the the, the building or the, the house itself is worth too much to knock down and do a subdivision right now. But if he's planning over sort of 10 or 20 years time, then he knows over that 10 or 20 years, as the property starts to wear out, then it's not worth renovating anymore. And then he can knock down and develop it. He's not really losing any value out of the, the existing house. He's basically almost the property's worth land value, and that's when he looks at developing it. So he's basically he's extracting every last cent out of the value of the building before he looks at developing the property. And I know from my experience, you know, I'm, when I'm trying to buy a development site, I'm trying to buy something that's basically worn out, something that's you know you're not paying anything for the building, so you're buying at land value. So if you have a really, and it's it's quite difficult to do that, you know, you. There's not that many houses that are you know, totally worn out that you're not paying anything for, for the house and it's just land value. So it makes it quite difficult to find that perfect development because if even if the house is you know slightly livable, then you know imagine what a house is worth a couple of hundred grand. So you know if you're if you've got a house that's even livable, then to knock that house down is going to cost you the price to develop it, as well as the value of what that house is worth. So even if it's worth a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred fifty thousand dollars, so when you're doing your development and you knock a house down and you subdivide. You know, straight away you're on the back foot. You've already lost the value of the house, let's say 150 grand, plus the cost of developing the, the property. And so you've got to gain that back with the subdivision before you can even try and make any money. So that's why I think it's a really interesting strategy. Let's let's go and buy the property now and it might, you know, have some still value left in the in the house or the, the home. And then what we're gonna do is just wear it out. Just use up all that value of the property, claim all the depreciation benefits, have it just you know, what in the world of accounting they call it the useful life of the property. Um, try and let it just use up the property as much as possible till it is only land value. And at that point, when it's land value, that's when we look at developing it and reaping the benefits of the development side. So, and you can imagine what that means. Then it opens up so many more possibilities, so many more properties which are, you know, that maybe the value is not worth subdividing right now because the land, the house is worth too much. But there's that inherent value in the land. Then you buy the property hang on to it, wait until you've used up all the value in the building and then suddenly that's not worth that anymore and then you can develop the site. So it makes total sense and I think it's a really good strategy. The only downside about this strategy is a really long-term strategy. So you've got, to, you've got to have plenty of time to sort of bring this into action and you have to you know, accumulate quite a few properties over time. If you do this for one property, it's probably not gonna change your life. Um, you do that over, you know, do that one a year and you know, over 10 or 20 years, you get 20 or 30 properties. You've got this situation where you've just Build up these properties in such a way that you've got this this value just sitting in the property waiting for you to realize it at some point in time. Hey, thanks for the like, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, once you realize that value, you can imagine if you've got 10 or 20 properties and you suddenly realize the value of all these properties at the same time, then you've set yourself up for retirement. So I think it's a really novel idea and I think it's a really interesting strategy and I think it really makes sense. So um, I, I, like I said, the, the downside is you've got to think long term. The other thing you've got to be thinking about, you've got to think about you know what's the value going to be in the future. If you're trying to predict, you know, 10 or 20 years down the track, then, you know, 
are you buying an area that's going to increase in value over time? Obviously, you know, then you're thinking about, you know, I think I've mentioned once before, it's all about supply and demand in the long term. So you're going to think about, you know, what's this area? What's the supply of properties going to be over the long term? What's the demand going to be over the long term? So if you know, you know, it's a limited supply because it's already been established and there's lots of, um, you know, there's very few opportunities to develop properties and, you know, more blocks of land and more, more properties to be created on the market. And you know there's going to be plenty of demand because there's things that people like, you know, close to the city, close to the beach, close to, you know, public transport, close to shops, old schools, all the things that everyone likes. Then there's lots of demand, not much supply. You know that over time the market's probably going to go up. So you get the benefits of the capital gains, plus you've locked away this, you know, hidden value or to others it seems like hidden value. But basically you're just waiting for the perfect time to realize it. So... Hopefully that's made sense to you guys. So um, yeah, that's that's a bit of an idea of how we can you know plan for the future and 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 basically it's sort of like, a bit like putting your money away for the future. Really, what you're trying to do, the benefit the benefit of this compared to putting your money in the bank is you got the benefit of you got a tenant paying to live in the property, so they're covering most of your costs. If you can get a property that's cash flow positive or you know and even cash flow neutral, you know it's not costing you any money to hold on to this property. If you can do that over ten or twenty years, you can do that with multiple properties. There's not costing you any money to hold these properties. They're, you know, at some point in time, the rent will go up, so it'll put money into your, pop- into your pocket at some point in time. So it's actually cash flow positive, but you're sitting there waiting for the opportunity to when you want to realize that value, and then you can you know, instantly create that value, put it all back in your pocket, and then you can just retire and sit, sit back and relax and enjoy yourself. So hi, John, thanks for joining, and hopefully that's made sense, and hopefully, yeah, if you've got a long-term strategy, you're thinking for the long term, then, um, yeah, maybe maybe have a think about, you know, not necessarily looking at whether you can realize the potential right now, but whether you can realize that potential in, you know, 10 or 20 years' time, and, and have a long-term plan to set yourself up for the future. So if that's made sense to you, then click on the like button. If it hasn't made sense, still click on the like button anyway, because I really appreciate it. If you've got something you'd like me to talk about in the future, then click on the comment box and put a comment in there. If you know someone else is thinking about building investing, and uh, yeah, click on the share button. I'm sure they might find it interesting. And it's a bit of an unusual idea. And uh, if you've got something you'd like me to talk about, then click on the comment box. And if you just want to tell me something about what I've got to say, then click on the comment box too. So thanks, guys, for joining me. And I look forward to catching you next time. Bye.